Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and this is Pointless, the quiz show where points are to be avoided if the prize is to be won. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> Welcome, Anne and Janet. You're our first pair on the show. How do you two know each other? We met nine years ago at a drama course in Lampeter in Wales and shared an interest in gin and tonics and shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what do you do first? Do you do the gin and tonics first, then the shopping, or the shopping first, then the gin and tonics? Mm, generally shopping. combined. Yeah. Just take the gin and tonics <laughs> round with you as you shop. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, uh, welcome to the show. I hope you enjoy it, and best of luck. Uh, and welcome back, Rob and Julie. You were on the show last time. We gave everyone two chances to reach our pointless final. Uh, this is your second chance. Remind us how you did last time. Not too well. Uh, we didn't get past the first round. You didn't? No. You didn't? What was it? It was a highbrow question about Punch and Judy. Mm. <laughs> Well, best of luck this afternoon. Uh, Tom and James, you were also on the show last time. This is your second and final shot at the Pointless final. Remind us how you did. Um, we did quite well in the first round, got a Pointless answer, but then it went rapidly downhill in the second, I'm afraid. Uh, it, was, it was battles and their conflicts. It was, yeah, that's right, yeah. Well, we've done that. That won't be coming back. That's, that's good. Uh, best of luck this afternoon. And finally, we've got Tandika and Salisha. How do you two know each other? Well, we're sisters and we live together in London. Very good. What do you do, Tandika? I'm a manager of a store. What is it? Is it a clothing store? Clothes store, yeah. A clothes store. It's a boutique, actually. A, a, I, I beg its pardon. It's okay. <laughs> a boutique. Salisha, how about you? I work in marketing for events. What sort of events are those? Concerts. The best sort of events? Yeah. Best of luck this afternoon. Anyway, we'll find out more about all of you throughout the show. There's just one more person for me to introduce. He's the man with obscurity coursing through his very veins. He is my pointless <laughs> friend. He's Richard. <laughs> Hello. What sort of show have we got this afternoon, Richard? Well, we've got two returning uh, pairs, but they got knocked out in round one and round two last time, so I think the field is wide open. <laughs> I can't say better than that. Now, we put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless, so we are after the obscure answers that they didn't get. To stay in the game with a chance to win our jackpot, all our players need to do is score as few points as they possibly can. But what everyone's trying to do, of course, is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time this happens, if it happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, nobody won the jackpot last time, so we add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at an unbelievable £6,250. <laughs> Very good. Let's play Pointless. In the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. And you have to be careful because if anyone gives me an incorrect answer, then you will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, our first category this afternoon is... The Natural World. There it is, The Natural World. World. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many RSPB top 25 garden birds as they could. <laughs> Richard. Yes, yeah, good news, isn't top it? Top birds. Uh, we're looking for any of the 25 most popular birds seen in British garden, so the birds you, you, you would normally see at home in a, in a British garden, the top 25, and that's according to the RSPB's 2010 Big Garden Bird Watch list. Right, Anne and Janet, you all drew lots before the show, and today you get to go first. Anne, something tells me you, you might be quite comfortable in this arena. Well, perhaps, yes, yes, I do see the odd birds from the window, but yeah. As you're sort of Pouring so glasses of gin. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. Leafing yeah. through catalogues yeah. on the phone yeah. to Janet. So, oh, yeah. page 25 is quite nice. <laughs> exactly. It is nice. <laughs> oh, there's a bird out there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that's so accurate? <laughs> Absolutely. And, of course, I live in Epsom and we get some very, very strange birds in Surrey, but I doubt they'd be on the RSBB list. So... I'm looking forward to a good bird. Righty here. I'm going to go for one that's uh, certainly a lot in our garden, and that is a woodpecker. A woodpecker? Yes. I'm going to have to ask you to be a little bit more specific. About the type of woodpecker? About the type of woodpecker. <laughs> green? You're going to go with green woodpecker? Yeah, I'm going to go a green, green woodpecker. woodpecker, yes. Green woodpecker. 
OK, you're hoping to score as few points as possible. Let's see if that's a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Green woodpecker. Oh, bad luck, Anne. Apparently, green woodpecker is an incorrect answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. Richard, green woodpecker. Yes, sorry, Anne. Green woodpecker was a long way down the list, uh, away from the top 25, so perhaps more popular in Surrey <laughs> than, than, the, uh, than the rest of the country. Probably. Julie, we are looking for the RSPB's top 25 garden birds. I spend a lot of time in the garden, but I've never looked at the birds. Um... I reckon there's a good few in that top um, 25 that you will know very well. Some that I've heard of. I've no idea whether they're popular or not, but I'll go for a chaffinch. A chaffinch. Excellent. Chaffinch, let's see if it's correct. If it is, let's see how many people said it. Chaffinch. It's right, Jim. Down it goes. It's a very good answer, Julie. Look at that. Eight. <laughs> Brilliant. Chaffinch scores eight, Richard. Yeah, Chaffinch, um, a very, very common bird, but a very low score, so well done. Uh, known around the country by various names, including White Wing, Scoppy, and Flecky Flocker. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, we are looking for the RSPB's top 25 garden birds. Not a huge bird watcher. Um... What's a huge bird watcher? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were sort of Bill Oddie, like I'm something massive. <laughs> Bill Oddie was like Brian Blessed out with a pair of binoculars. Are you, um, a, are you any kind of a bird watcher? No, not at all. But I do know a few birds, so... <laughs> I think... <laughs> it's just the gift that keeps on giving this round, isn't it? <laughs> I think I'm going to go for Swallow. You're going to go for Swallow. You're hoping this will score you as few points as possible. Let's hope Swallow, surely made it into the top 25. Uh, and if it did, let's see how many people said it. Swallow. No! Oh. Uh, unfortunately, it is an incorrect answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. It's great news for Anne and Janet, though. <laughs> <laughs> Bad news for Tom and James. Swallow, Richard, not yeah, in the top 25. Yeah, it's not, it's not a common garden bird in the UK, the swallow. I think it's, it has high re name recognition. Maybe it's only because it, it, it's on tour, Swallow, isn't it? It's just, it's a touring bird, a well, migratory bird, I think is probably the <laughs> word I, I was, I was uh, <sighs> reaching for there. Um, they're, only, they're, they're just fair weather friends, aren't they, Swallows? They are, yeah. They spend most, most of the time out of the country. Thank you very much, Richard. Bad luck, Tom. Silesia. Go on, give me, think of a nice obscure bird. Have you, um, have you got a garden, Silesia? Obscure. Have you got a garden? Yeah, I have, yeah. Do you occasionally hear birds in it? Oh, in London, they're considered vermin, really, the birds that we get. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call them birds. <laughs> Pick a really obscure bird from your garden. OK. Um, thrush? OK, I, I have to ask you to be more specific. I'm going to make one up. OK. <sighs> Red. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love how long you thought about that and then how quickly you said it. <laughs> Red. OK, let's see if it's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. The Red Thrush. Yeah. <laughs> Bad luck. I'm afraid that also is an incorrect answer, which means you score 100 points. Rich. The red thrush is not one of the top 25 most popular garden birds in Britain. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores. There's not a lot between them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, Rob and Julie, you're looking great. <laughs> Chaffinch was a brilliant answer, as it turns out. Otherwise, it's hundreds all round. This is one of the highest scoring first rounds we've ever had, I think. So, Janet, James and Tandika, you have got a job to do. It's all down to you in the second pass. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? So, Tandika, you're currently on 100, which sounds like a lot, but then pretty much everyone else is also on 100. <laughs> We're looking for the RSPB top 25 garden birds. We want a nice, obscure one. I'm just going to say magpie, because it's the only bird I can think of, and I don't know birds. OK. Magpie. Well, because you're all joint high scorers, there's no red line for you. You just have to hope that magpie scores 
nice and low. OK, let's see if magpie is a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Magpie. It's right. Yes. <laughs> 23, Tandika. <laughs> a good answer. That takes your total up to 123. Richard, yeah, magpie. Great. Uh, a, a genuinely correct answer, which is lovely to see. The, the magpie <laughs> is in that top 25. However, the red magpie wouldn't have been. We would have, we would have disallowed that. Uh, OK, right. James and Tom, you are on 100. You have to score 22 or less with this, James. Um, well, I'm just going to try and get one right and not go for... because that seems to be the gist of things. I'm just going to say starling. You're going to say starling? Yeah. OK, you get a red line. There it is. If you score 22 or less with Starling, you're definitely through to the next round. Let's see if Starling made it to the top 25, and if it did, let's see how many people said it. It's there. Oh. Not a bad answer. 32, that scores you, taking your total up to 132. So, Richard, Starling. Yes, yeah, Starling, very good answer. Uh, very common in the UK, also very common in the US. There are, there are 200 million Starlings in the US, all of whom descend from 100 Starlings that were released in Central Park. Someone's trying to introduce America to every bird mentioned in the works of Shakespeare. There's now 200 God, that's million. That's just poetic, isn't it? A hundred <laughs> Starlings. Yeah. Uh, right, now, Rob, whatever you say, you are through to the next round. Even if you score 100 points, you'll never overtake 132, which James and Tom scored. Are you, are you, do you have a garden, Rob? Yes, yes. Do you, do you watch the birds out there well, at I all? Well, I know there's two types of birds actually nesting in the eaves of my house. Ah. One of them's, oh. this, one of them's a starling. <laughs> right. It's a hell of a racket. The other one is house martin. A house martin? Yeah. Let's see how many people said house martin and if it is, of course, a correct answer. House martin. No! No, unfortunately, house martin is... An incorrect answer, which means you join the legions of, uh, <laughs> of incorrect answerers in this round. Like Score the maximum of 100 points. Takes your total up to 108. Richard, House Martin, not in the top 25. I know, surprising that. I think maybe the clue is in the name, House Martin, rather, rather than Garden Martin. <laughs> <laughs> right. Janet and Anne. You are currently on 100. You have to score 31 or less with this, Janet. Janet, you, like Anne, you know your birds. I was thinking of the lesser spotted woodpecker. The lesser spotted woodpecker. Mm. Green didn't make the grade. Maybe lesser spotted woodpecker did. <laughs> and if it scores you 31 or less, you're through to the next round. Anything over that, and I'm afraid we will be saying goodbye to you. There's your red line. If you come below that red line, you are through to the next round. OK, let's see if that made it into the top 25. And if it did, let's see how many people said it. The lesser spotted woodpecker. Oh! <laughs> Blimey, I'm afraid that is an incorrect answer, which means you <laughs> also score the maximum of 100 <laughs> points, taking your total up to an unbeatable 200 <laughs> points. Wow, Richard, the highest scoring round I think we've ever played. I know, it's, uh, it's tough that there's, uh, there, there are some very, very common birds on the list. There's crow, jackdaw, wren, goldfinch, blue tit. The lesser spotted woodpecker is particularly unfortunate uh, because if you take great spotted woodpecker, not only was it on the list, it was a pointless answer. Aww. There are two pointless answers. Uh, the long-tailed tit and the great spotted woodpecker. The dunnock. Very rare bird, but uh, makes lovely tea cakes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at the, uh, the worst three answers you could have given, apart from red thrush. These are, <laughs> these are the ones that most people in our hundred said. Third, it was the house sparrow, or sparrow, which would have scored 52 points. Uh, in second, the blackbird with 53. And do you know what was top? What do you think was top? Was it the little robin? The robin, exactly, <laughs> with, uh, with 56 points. And Celicia, to clear up the, uh, the thrush issue, uh, we didn't accept red thrush, it's song thrush was oh. the bird we were looking for. Song thrush is in the top 25. OK, well, thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score, it's Anne and Janet. I'm sorry, it's just a really tough round, that. And, and they, weren't, they weren't terrible answers. You were so close to a pointless very answer. Had it been gin... We'd yes. been... Oh. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Well, it's been lovely having you on the show. I'm so sorry you haven't got further than round one, but, of course, everyone gets two chances to reach the point this final. Next time you're with us, I'm sure you'll go much further. But thank you so much for playing. You've been great contestants. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two.
Now, obviously, there's only room for two pairs in the head-to-head, -head, so one team is going to be leaving us at the end of this round. OK, the category for round two is... Pop music. Pop music. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? <laughs> and whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. And the question is... Classic 80s albums and their artists. Classic 80s albums and their artists. In this round, we're going to show you a list of classic album titles from the 1980s. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to tell us which artist released the albums. Richard. Yeah, we're going to give you uh, the names of six 80s albums. All you've got to do is, uh, is tell us who released them. The obvious ones will obviously score you big points. The difficult ones will score you very few points. Uh, if you give us a wrong answer at any point, you'll score 100 points. And see if you can get all of them at home. OK, the first six are Brothers in Arms, Yo Bum Rush the Show, Thriller, The Lexicon of Love, Appetite for Destruction, Sign of the Times. I'll just read those again. Brothers in Arms, Yo Bum Rush the Show, Thriller, The Lexicon of Love, Appetite for Destruction, Sign of the Times. OK, Julie, we are looking for the people who recorded these albums. Did you listen to a lot of music in the 80s? Absolutely none. None at all? I definitely know one of them, and it might be completely wrong. I'm going to try Brothers in Arms. Am I right in thinking that might be Dire Straits? Who knows? Dire Straits, Brothers in Arms. Let's see if that's a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people knew it. Forty-one. <laughs> Not terrible. Forty-one. Richard. Yeah, Brothers in Arms got to number one in May 1985. Spent uh, an incredible 228 weeks in the charts. Seemed like longer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Richard. Tom, <laughs> is, this, is this a subject that you feel you have any sort of expertise in it's at all? It's a little bit before my time, I'm afraid. Before your time. Uh, Yo bum rush the show, not <laughs> John. <laughs> That's not... I think I'm going to go for the lexicon of love and say Annie Lennox, just because it sounds similar to her name. And I'm going to regret <laughs> that on and out. <laughs> OK. Because <laughs> it sounds similar to... Yes, of course. That's... <laughs> Um, no, why not, for heaven's sake? It might, it could be right. Lexicon of Love, Annie Lennox. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Oh, no. Bad luck. No, that was a good, you know, for heaven's sake, you didn't go for the obvious one. You took a, a reasoned <laughs> guess at, uh, at one that was, that was wrong. However, I'm afraid that is incorrect, so that scores you 100 points. Richard, I'm not sure you can tell us anything other than that that's incorrect. Well, I was going to yeah, the bad news is, yeah, it's not an Annie Lennox album. The good news is it does sound a little bit like her name. <laughs> so, but, yeah, I won't tell you just, just in case uh, the other team want to have a go at it. OK, now, Celicia, remember, we are looking for the people who recorded these classic 80s albums. You yeah. work in, in, in events. You might even have put some I of these people know. on. I don't bum, the, bum rush the show. <laughs> you can't even see it. Bill is obvious. Yeah. I'm going to have to go Sign of the Times. Prince. Prince, Sign of the Times. Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people remember that Prince recorded Sign of the Times. It's right. Good answer. Oh, yeah. Twelve. <laughs> Only 12 people remembered Sign of the Times being by Prince. Scores you 12, Richard. Yeah, reached number four in uh, 1987. A very low score by the, by the artist formerly known as the artist formerly known as Prince. <laughs> uh, shall we take a look at the... I have to say, I bought Yo Bum Rush the show the day it came out. Did you? I did, yeah. <laughs> Do you know who it's by? Is it Public Enemy? Is it... It's Public End Enemy, and it was a pointless answer, so very wow. well done at home if, uh, if you've got Public Enemy. Uh, thriller, of course, everybody's uh, skirted round. It's Michael Jackson. Would have scored you 92. Uh, Eight people don't know it. Uh, it's the biggest selling album ever in the entire history of the world. Thriller. Unlike The Let's Gun of Love. Uh, ABC. Which is obviously. by... ABC. ABC, yeah. exactly right. Would have scored you 20 points. And another of the biggest selling albums of all time, Appetite for Destruction. Who's that by? Guns and Roses. Guns and Roses is exactly right. And that would have scored you eight, eight. points. Very well done if you got all six of them.
especially Yo Bum Rush the Show. <laughs> anyway, right, sorry, yes, let's take a look at the scores. We're halfway through the round. Well, Tom and James, way out ahead there on 100. James, you're going to have to do as hard as you... Well, you knew, you knew the answer no, to yeah, uh, Guns N' Roses first. there. So maybe, well, maybe you'll know some of the answers on the next pass. Um, otherwise, we have Tandika and Salisha looking fantastic on 12. Great answer from Salisha. Uh, and in the middle, Rob and Julie. Not bad, Julie. Rob, score nice and low in the next pass and you'll be through to the next round. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put six more classic album titles from the 1980s on the board. And here they are. We have got The Joshua Tree, Rain Dogs, No Jacket Required, Like a Prayer, Back in Black, Slippery When Wet. Now, remember, we are looking for the people who recorded these albums and you're trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. OK, Tandika, mm. you're on 12. You only have to score 87 or less with this answer. Bearing in mind that only 92 people knew that Michael Jackson did Thriller. I know one, and it's probably the most obvious one. Well, either you go for that one, or you take a massive punt. I have to go for it, Madonna, like a prayer. OK, Madonna, like a prayer. If this scores 87 or less, you're through to the next round. Don't forget, these guys have get to answer as well. So, there's your red line. Below that red line, you're through to the next round. Let's see if it's a correct answer, and if it is, how many people said it? Madonna, like a prayer. It's good enough. It's good enough. 79 people knew that. Takes your score up to 91. Richard. Uh, yes, yeah, a great answer, and you could, you could take the risk and get a high score and still go through. It was her fourth studio album, her third number one. And the, the original pressings were scented with patchouli oil, so you could imagine you were smelling Madonna while you listened to her. <laughs> anyway, right, James and Tom, you are currently on 100. You are the high scorers. James, you have to score as low as you possibly can. Find a pointless answer on that board. Are you a fan of any of the people who might have recorded yeah, these albums? I'm a bit of an 80s throwback, so I know three of them for sure. And I'm not sure about the other one. I think it might be low, so I'm going to have to take a bit of a gamble here, I think. OK. Um, I'm going to say no jacket required, Phil Collins. No jacket required, Phil Collins. OK, well, no red line for you, I'm afraid, because you're the high scorers. <laughs> but let's see if no jacket required... Scores you nice and low and keeps you in the game. No jacket required. Phil Collins, how many people said that? Well, it is correct. <laughs> well, that answer scores you 25, taking your total up to 125. Richard? Yeah, very good. Uh, reached number one in March 1985 and stayed on the charts for another three years. Thank you very much. A good answer from James. Rob and Julie, you are on 41. You have to score 83 or less with this answer. Well, I know the top one. But I don't know whether it be any more than 83. It's very well known. I'm going to go, I'm going to go for the bottom one. The slippery when wet. I think that's by Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. You want to be scoring 83 or less. There is your red line. Come below that red line and you are through to the head-to-head. -head. Let's see if that's correct. And how many people said slippery when wet? Bon Jovi. It's right, and it's good enough. Down it goes, 16. <laughs> Very good indeed. That takes your total up to 57 and sees you through to the next round. Richard, Bon Jovi. Uh, yeah, very good. Slippery when wet, which, of course, is a title beloved by health and safety officers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look at the ones uh, that we haven't heard. Uh, yeah, Joshua Tree uh, was a very big score, of course, by U2. I uh, would have scored you 52. Now, Back in Black, do you know that? ACDC. ACDC, yeah. exactly right, from 1980. Would have scored you 12. First album with Brian Johnson singing. I'm so sorry. Escape to the Country is about to start. We really, we really need to get on. <laughs> is, that, is that all right? We'll talk about it afterwards. And Rain Dogs would have scored you two points. you know who Rain Tom Dogs Waits. is by? Tom Waits, exactly right. Very, very well done if you got that at home. Thanks, Richard. So, at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score is Tom and James. Look at that, 125. Impressive. Impressive. And James, you, you knew. <laughs> How, what, other, what other things did you know on that board? I knew most of the, the first one I would have gone for Guns N' Roses got eight. So it's. You went with Phil. I went Phil. And you'll regret it forever. I'll know from <laughs> now on. Like so many teenagers in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so sorry, Tom and James. That was your second chance on the show. But you have been fantastic contestants. Um, but this is where we say goodbye. Thanks so much for playing. Great contestants. Thank you. <laughs> 
So for the remaining two pairs, things are going to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> so well done, Rob, Julie, Tandika and Salish. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £6,250. <laughs> OK, you are going head-to-head -head on the best of three questions. You are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is give an answer that scores less than the other pair to win that question. The first pair to win two questions will be playing for today's jackpot. OK, let's play Pointless. <laughs> right, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many US states in New England as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're simply looking for any of the six US states that make up the area New England. OK, Rob and Julie, because you've played best throughout the show so far, you get to go first. We are looking for any of the six US states that make up New England. Hampshire, that's OK. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll for Hampshire. Hampshire. Mm -hmm. OK. Have you, have you travelled much? Have you been, to... been to... New England, yes. And I've been to the capital of Hampshire. <laughs> Right, you are. OK, Hampshire is off the table. Tandika and Salisha. Hi. You can do your thinking out loud, if you like. Well, we don't know, so... <laughs> <laughs> There's no thinking going on. OK. <laughs> do you so, have a clue? It's going to be like the thrush all over again, isn't it? You're going to <laughs> you're gonna have to think of a state that might be in New England. You say it. Um... Newcastle? <laughs> <laughs> no. OK. We have Hampshire. We have Newcastle. No. <laughs> Let's take those in the order they were given. <laughs> we are looking for US states <laughs> to be found in New England. Uh, Rob and Julie have said Hampshire. Let's see if that's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Hampshire. New Hampshire, isn't it? Shh. Ask us again. OK, Tandika and Salisha have said Newcastle. <laughs> Salisha said Newcastle. <laughs> Lisa said something. Uh, let's see if that's correct, and if it is, let's see how many people said Newcastle. OK, <laughs> so after the first question, it is nil-nil. A nil-nil draw, Richard. Hampshire, Newcastle. Yeah, where do we begin there, everybody? <laughs> Yeah, uh, Hampshire, yeah, you probably won't realise, New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Yeah. Uh, Newcastle. Um, I think I was thinking of the new yeah. from the New Hampshire. Oh, the, no, the new is great. I don't know, listen, I'm not, I've got nothing against new. Newcastle. Yeah, I think the castle is the problem there. But let's, uh, let's, let's have a little look. Uh, Vermont would have scored you 13. Rhode Island, that was 14. Connecticut, 17. Massachusetts, 19. There's New Hampshire, uh, 23. And right at the top, Maine, with 30. Any of those would have won you a point. So, no score after the first question. Here is your second question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Dad's Army characters as they could. Oh. Dad's Army characters. Richard. We're looking for any of the eight regular characters who appeared and were credited in more than 50 episodes of Dad's Army. Uh, there is a thing, the voice of Dad's Army, which is credited. We won't accept that. But any of the eight main characters from Dad's Army, we're just looking for surnames. So if you know the ranks, fine. But otherwise, just give us the surnames. OK, thanks very much. This time, Tandika and Salisha, you go first. Did you watch Dad's Army? No, I was so out of our Never shot. watched oh, it. It's, really really it's a classic. It's one of the great classics. It's no sex in the sea, is it? <laughs> <laughs> That is definitely true. <laughs> it's, it is no sex in the it city. It is no sex in the city, yeah. Yeah, it's about, about, yeah, it's about guys in the, in the army. What did you say? About guys in the army. Oh, right, stop shouting. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know it, so we're just going to make it up. OK. James <laughs> Smith. Sorry, James. Smith. Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> Smith, you say, Rob and Julie. I think you may, you're close because of Smith, so I think you might think of Jones. Oh, part. my... We were going to say I that! Know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go for Corporal Jones. Corporal Jones. Yeah. OK. 
So we have Smith and we have Jones. <laughs> Let's see, Smith, is that correct? And if it is, how many people said it? Smith. Now I'm afraid that is an incorrect answer. Rob and Julie have said, Corporal Jones, this merely has to be correct for you to win the point. Let's see if it is correct and how many people said it. That's all it needed to be. 38 people said Corporal Jones. <laughs> After the second question, Rob and Julie are up 1-0. Richard. Yeah, Jones, you are so close. Let's take a look at all the, uh, all the answers. These were the, the regular characters in Dad's Army. Uh, Warden Hodges, that was the, the best answer. Well done if you got him, the, the air raid warden. Private Fraser, we're all doomed. Private Walker, 10. Private Godfrey, 15. And the big scorer, Sergeant Wilson, with 16. There's Lance Corporal Jones with 38. Private Pike on 48. And Captain Mannering, top of the pile, with 63. Well done if you got all eight of those. OK. So, Rob and Julia are up 1-0. Tandika and Silesia, you have to win this point. Stay in the game. OK, here is your third question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Home Secretaries under New Labour as they could. Home Jason. Secretaries under New Labour. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any of the six Labour Home Secretaries between 1997 and 2010. And Rob and Julie, you get to go first again. Yeah, yeah. We'll, um, we'll play safe and we'll go for Jack Straw. Jack Straw. OK. Dandika and Salisha, you can, you can talk out loud if you like. <laughs> we were going to say Jack Straw. Oh. <laughs> Who's the blind man? Oh, was he Home Secretary? I don't know. Yeah, yeah you might be right. No, no, mm? Oh, Salisha, don't do that. <laughs> Just say it. David Blunkett. David Blunkett, OK. So we have Jack Straw and we have David Blunkett. Robin Juni said Jack Straw. Let's see how many people said that and if it's correct. It's correct. <laughs> 21. <laughs> 21 people said Jack Straw. Tandika and Salisha said David Blunkett. Let's see if that is correct. And if it is, how many people said it? David Blunkett. It's correct. So after three questions, you are one point apiece. Richard? Uh, yeah, very, very well played. Let's take a look at, uh, at the whole list, see how many of these you've got at home. Uh, John Reed, right at the bottom there, now chairman of Celtic FC, he would have scored you five points. Charles Clark, who lost his seat at the last election, would have scored you six, as would Alan Johnson. There's Blunkett on 12, Jackie Smith on 16, and Jack Straw was actually the most popular answer of all with 21. Again, very, very well done if you got all six of them. OK, here is your next question. You are on one point each at this stage. Whoever wins this point is through to the final. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many countries with a post-war Wimbledon men's champion as they could. Richard. We're looking for any country uh, which has a player who's won the men's Wimbledon singles title since 1945 all the way up to 2010. Right you are. Tandika and Salisha, you go first. We are looking for a country from which a post-war Wimbledon men's champion has come. It doesn't matter if they've been in the war. It's just Shh, don't shout. <laughs> uh, Russia. Russia. OK. Rob and Julie. Rob and Elizabeth. Where are you from? Should we play safe and say Sweden? Yeah. We'll play safe again. <laughs> And then go Sweden. OK, you're going to go Sweden. OK, so we have Russia and we have Sweden. Russia, said Tandika and Salisha. Let's see if that's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Russia. <laughs> Bad luck. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer. So, Rob and Julie, this answer merely has to be correct for you to be through to the final and a chance to win that £6,250. Let's see if it is correct. Sweden. <laughs> it's right. 33. Well done. So after four questions, we finally have our finalists. Rob and Julie go through 2-1. Richard. 
Yeah, that's unlucky, Tundi Kronsali show. They've won the women's title, but uh, they haven't had a men's champion since the war. There were uh, 11 answers here, and there is a pointless one, so very well done at home. If you said Egypt, uh, Drobny won in 1954, so it's a very, very good bit of obscure knowledge if you got it. Um, the Netherlands, there with four. Uh, Richard Krychek won for them. Czechoslovakia with four. Switzerland with 23. France with 23. They won the first, uh, the first one right after the war. Spain with 28, uh, Santana and Nadal both won it. Sweden with 33, uh, Edberg and Borg. Australia with 36, there's been nine different winners from Australia. Germany, 39. And the United States on 65, there's been 15 different winners from, uh, from America. OK, thanks very much, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head, Ted, I'm afraid, is Tandika and Salisha. I t Tandika, you, I t if you ever wanted a job as a librarian, you've got a, your shh, don't shout line is... Uh... <laughs> is going to set you in such good stead. <laughs> well, see, I never heard what you were saying, Salisha. All I can do is being told off for shouting. Um, anyway, you've been fantastic contestants. Well done. You've come all the way through to the head-to-head. -head. Um, but you've done, you've done very well. You've been great contestants. We'll see you again next time. Of course, everyone gets two chances at the pointless final. Um, but thanks so much for playing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but for Rob and Julie, it's now time for our pointless final and the chance to win £6,250. Well, congratulations, Rob and Julie. You've fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. <laughs> now, though, you have a chance to play for our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £6,250. Well, now, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that no-one could think of. Now, we haven't had any pointless answers on the show today. You just need to find one now to go home with all of that money. First of all, you've got to choose a category, and you can choose from these three options. They are... Number one's Darts British Theatre. Number one's Darts British Theatre. What's it going to be? You know which one I'd go for. You'd go for Darts, wouldn't you? I would, yeah, cos... Well, British theatre could be just about anything. British theatre sounds a bit highbrow for me. And number one's going to be music. <laughs> number one's going to be music. I can't do music. Let's go for you're darts. You're going to go for Why darts. Not? Correct, yeah. OK, you're going to go for darts. Let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many darts world champions as they could. Richard. Yeah, I'm very excited. I don't think anyone would ever choose darts. <laughs> it's great. We're looking for the names of any world champion, either BDO or PDC, since 1979 up to 2010. Right, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win £6,250 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. Race was really early. And, and, uh, but if you've got the, the other one, not the PDC, the BDO, right. they're more, more obscure, like Wolfie Smith and, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. and uh, Ted Hankey and people like that. It's those oh, people that you've Somebody said... Anderson as well, somebody Anderson, Bob Anderson. Those, 30 seconds those gone. Right. Names, you know, them again. Say Bob them Anderson, again. Keith right. Teller. Keith Teller, I've Wolf, heard of. Wolfie Smith. Wolfie Smith, I've uh, never heard of. It might be Yelly Klassen, I think. He might have won it. That's a bit of that's a, out of the blue, that. But he's a young Dutch player. He might have won it one year and then he changed the PDC. 10 seconds left. I think we'll go, go for him as the well. obscure one. Bob Anderson. Or Keith Teller. No, I've got Bob Anderson. OK. And then we'll have Wolfie Smith. Yeah. OK. Yeah. OK, you've got your three. Right, we're going for. Wolfie Smith. Wolfie Smith. Bob Anderson. Bob Anderson. And Yelly Klassen. Yelly Klassen. So you think Yelly Klassen is probably your, your best yes, punt yeah. at a, at a, yes. at a point yeah. of answer. So we'll put him last. Yeah. Which between Wolfie and Bob? We'll go Wolfie first. So Wolfie Smith, yeah. Bob Anderson yeah. and Yelly Klassen. OK, we were looking for Darts World Champions. This was your least confident answer. You only need to find one pointless answer to win... £6,250. That's the jackpot today. So, Wolfie Smith is your first. Confident? Well, I'm confident they were world champions. I don't know about we can see £6,250. What would you what would you spend that on if you won that? We're going to Florida. Well, I've already booked <laughs> my holiday to Florida and I can't afford to pay for it, so it will go towards that. <laughs> and we'll go with her then. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Is that how you generally book holidays? Absolutely, every time. Best way? Book the flights and then my husband can't say no. Wow, they must love you down at the travel agents. <laughs> Excellent. OK. 
Well, let's see if Wolfie Smith might do it for you. Wolfie Smith, you say. It has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot of £6,250. Let's see if it's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Wolfie Smith. <sighs> oh. Bad luck. Wolfie Smith, unfortunately, is an incorrect answer. Therefore, obviously not pointless. So, you only have two more chances to win today's jackpot. Your second answer... Bob Anderson. There he is. We were looking for darts champions, darts world champions. Let's hope nobody said Bob Anderson. Let's see if it's correct this time. And if it is, let's see if it's pointless. Bob Anderson. It's correct. It's correct. Down it goes. This is your second of three shots at the jackpot. Has to go all the way down to pointless. You'd win that £6,250. <laughs> Two people remembered Bob Anderson, so I'm afraid he is not a pointless answer. OK, this is your last and final chance to win today's jackpot of £6,250. We're looking for darts world champions. You said this was your best shot at a pointless answer. This has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. Let's see if Yelly Klassen is correct, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Yelly Klassen. It's right. It's right. Bob Anderson only scored two. You think this is more obscure than that? I certainly think it is. Down it goes. This is £6,250. Yelly Klassen. Yay! Yay! Oh, God. Very well done. Thank you. Oh, Very well done, oh, well done Yelly Klassen. Brilliant. Oh, thank you so Oh, fantastic. Congratulations. You managed to find that all-important pointless answer, which means you go home with a jackpot of £6,250. Oh, the travel agents are going to be thrilled with that. <laughs> Superb. Book all sorts of trips now. Oh, you can. All sorts of trips that that won't even cover. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, and Rob, you're, gonna, you're heading out to Florida too. It looks like it now. Looks like you are. Well, take your, take your arrows with you, maybe. I better take my wife oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's going to be chuffed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Oh, well, many, many congratulations. Richard, I mean, let's just find out about Wolfie. Well, you're th it's Wolfie Adams you're thinking of, Martin, oh, and Wolfie yeah. Adams. Wolfie Smith was in it's Citizen Smith. Citizen Smith, <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> that's him. That's, and that's why he never won the, uh, the oh. World Darts Championship. <laughs> That's the main reason. Uh, yeah, Yella Klassen, very, very good. One in 2006, beat uh, Raymond van Barneveld. He's the pin-up boy of the dance world, which is uh, quite a title to have, <laughs> isn't it? And, yeah, Bob Anderson, also a good answer. There, was, there were six or seven pointless answers, but uh, who cares? Yella Klassen was one of them, so he won the money. Aww. Who cares indeed? Well, thanks again to our winning contestants, Rob and Julie, who go away with today's jackpot of £6,250. <laughs> well done. Join us next time and we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>